Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are having a CUBE conversation in Palo Alto, California today, talking about security and mobile, and, and really, I guess, a lot of security. So we're excited to have Tom Kemp, co-founder and CEO of Centrify, stop by and give us a quick update. So Tom, welcome. Yeah, great to be here, Jeff. Super, so uh, before we get started, I want to give everyone just kind of a quick update on Centrify, if they're not familiar with the company. Yeah, sure, so we're a security company, and specifically, we're focused on addressing the problems with passwords that people have. People have too many passwords. <laughs> passwords. Um, or if they have a lot of passwords, oftentimes they have too much privilege associated with those passwords as well. So we're specifically a company that does identity and access management, and we give users one single sign-on and give IT a single way to control who can access what across data center, cloud, and mobile. Okay, so single sign-on's been around for a long time. It's been a nirvana. I remember selling single sign-on <laughs> 15 years ago. This was the great thing. but. Obviously, so are you pretty much enterprise uh, focused on your single sign-on, and is it at, at kind of the enterprise access layer, or is, do you go beyond that? Yeah, yes, and we go beyond that. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, what's happened over the last few wor uh, years is the world's become more deperimeterized, right? Right. And so, right. so the fundamental question is, is that how can you secure this new world? where increasingly people are leveraging mobile devices at Starbucks talking to SaaS applications. So the old world of single sign-on was focusing on-premise with SAP, doing a lot of screen scraping, shoving passwords in, but now the world is that uh, end users are on the go, they're increasingly using mobile devices, they're talking to SaaS applications, but they also need to talk back to on-premise apps as well. So the problem is just, huger in terms of you need to have the ability to talk to hundreds if not thousands of SaaS applications to have a viable solution. You need to have a real strong mobile story to ensure seamless anywhere, any device access uh, and you also need to tie in to uh, legacy infrastructure as well because people still need to access that. So the problem is just significantly more uh, complex. Um, and you need to uh, address that, but then there's also other things you need to address as well. Right, and you guys have been at this for a while. Founded in 2004, congratulations. Yep. Just had a recent uh, funding round, 42 million. That's yeah. a nice uh, pop for the bank. But you've really seen the, the seen the uh, the situation change, right? 2004 was really about perimeter security, I imagine. Much more about, you know, basically you just guard the door and they either get in or get, in, get out and once they're in, they're in. But now, with the mobile devices, bring your own device and as you said, not only do you have SaaS applications, but you have blended use, right? I may have Dropbox uh, for my personal use to share pictures and then maybe I'm using Dropbox to share within the company or I just had an application the other day where we were sharing logos with a different company. So much more complexity. Oh. Absolutely, and so the, the, the thing is, is that, yeah, before it was always about securing the perimeter, and oftentimes what happened, it was kind of crunchy on the outside, but chewy on the inside, but that perimeter has completely disappeared, and so what can you protect? And so we are increasingly seeing that it's the user, it's their identity is the most important thing. So we oftentimes say identity is the new perimeter, and it's not only about giving a user a single username and password, but it's also providing additional step-up level of security to ensure it's really them. And that's where you can tie in the mobile device and use biometrics, okay. um, or as well as additional factors to say, yes, it's me trying to access Salesforce, but based on the fact that I have this mobile device and I push a, uh, my thumb against the device, at the same time allows me to get in. Um, so that's one aspect. The other thing is, is that with this whole deperimeterization, um, that what we're also finding is an, another set of problems besides end users having too many usernames and passwords, is the fact that certain users within the organization have too much privilege. Um, and now we're seeing a lot of these hacks are going after the users with their identity, but they're specifically targeting the people that have access and the keys to the kingdom, to the servers and the applications, et cetera. So the problem has gotten more complex than that, and users have too many passwords, and there's too many passwords out there by IT people have too much privilege. Now wasn't that kind of accounted for bef before in the concept of roles, right? So if you had a role, you had a particular type of a role, then that's how your access was granted. 
So you're saying that's no longer adequate or this is a different derivation uh, well, of that? See, the issue is with the whole consumerization of IT that IT has no clue <laughs> what applications are, are being used, et cetera. So you can say, oh yes, Jeff has this role, right? But you mentioned Dropbox, there's, there's Box. Uh, the marketing department decides to spin up Marketo or, or Google Analytics. Um, and so IT, it's very much more difficult to centrally control roles and rights when you have a deperimeterized world and most computing is now being done on mobile devices as well. Right. So you still need it, but, but the problem is just much more complex uh, okay. as well. And you need to layer on additional levels of, of security such as multi-factor authentication, you need provisioning, you need this privilege management as well. So okay. it's just, it's become a, a, a much huger problem and traditional ways of doing security firewalls, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, are becoming less and less applicable in a cloud and mobile world because we don't walk around carrying a firewall when we're at Starbucks, <laughs> right? Right, right. So would you say then, that it's really uh, a term that gets thrown around a lot in the cube about perimeter, perimeterless security. That's really the era that we are. Yes, and so, exactly, it's, it's, it's that era, and so the focus is now more on the user and protecting the user, protecting their identity, and using their device as another means uh, to validate it's really them. Yeah. It's really Tom Kemp as opposed to someone in China that stole my username and password. Right, right. That's interesting, we, we, uh, we did a thing with Dell and they were talking about some intelligent devices where even if you got the device and the password, based on the pressure and you know other kind of much granular levels of detail, they could figure out whether it's really me or not, just in the way that I interact with my own phone. Yeah, at Mobile World Congress, we actually, uh, showed the integration with the Apple Touch ID and the the, uh, the the similar touch technology that Samsung has in their device as well. So so to access a, a application, yes, you may type a password, but then you must also have the device, maybe type a pin, and then put your thumb to you know send the pin across as right, well. Right. And so that's actually three forms of authentication uh, there as well. And that may be you know what people want because uh, again, if someone s were to steal a password to your, your Salesforce or your Office 365 or your box, some serious damage could happen. Right, right. So there's a lot of different paths we could go down here. Um, one of them is the big data path. And yeah. um, you know, one of the big issues with, with big data is or the opportunities that big data opens up is now you can not only work with the data that you control from the systems you control, but you can also pull in external data. Are you using those types of of uh, sources and, and information to help with the authentication? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, the thing with Centrify is, I, I know there's a lot of startup companies that are focusing on cloud identity and doing SaaS single sign-on. We do that, but, but we started originally focusing on identity on premises as well, right? And so we think we're pretty unique in that we can span across not only cloud and mobile, but address the data center and provide a holistic view. And what we're seeing is that one of the biggest drivers of people still deploying systems and applications on premises is big data. There's, there's a, a greater comfort level to have their big data warehouses, their Hadoop uh, uh, deployments to be on-prem, and customers are setting up you know, these clusters with hundreds and thousands of systems, et cetera. They're not necessarily yet putting them in the cloud. But now what you have is a situation in which the data is becoming centralized, and there's more precious data in, in one location, and it's becoming even more important to granularly control who can access that, as well as to audit activity. And that's that privilege at management aspect. Okay. And so recently we announced partnerships with Cloudera, Hortonworks, and MapR. And we're really one of the first identity management vendors to, to provide this type of capability for big data uh, deployments. And so the gist of that partnership is you and you putting your security layer into their system. Yeah, so we're, uh, look, the big data vendors, and, and if you were to talk to Tom Riley at Cloudera, John Schroeder Just had at Tom Mapar, on last except, week, yeah, yeah we yeah. had Schroeder Rob, on before. Rob yep. at Hortonworks, yep, yep. if you talk to those guys, they're very proud of the security that they do. Right. And, and so our message is we embrace that and extend it. We extend it beyond just doing the actual Hadoop uh, infrastructure because people from the outside are, are trying to get into the Hadoop infrastructure um, or we also can tie that Hadoop infrastructure to their existing Active Directory so you, can, you don't have to have separate accounts, right? Okay. Which makes it uh, easier for IT to deploy Hadoop if 
with our technology providing the integration layer between that and Active Directory, providing the auditing of activity, because all the key data is in it. So if you look at the recent hacks, like the recent Anthem hack, I right. mean, there was 80 right. million records. I mean, clearly that's like a big data right. type scenario and situation, and someone got in and was able to do that, and you really need uh, identity management, specifically user level activity monitoring, to be able to detect that, because clearly log files were not applicable. So again, the focus is shifting from uh, traditional security, be it SIM, antivirus, uh, you know, firewalls, to focusing more on user and user level activity. So talk a little bit about the arms race, right? Because you, you guys are in the arms race, you've been in the business a long time, and yeah. it's always that you, you put up new, new barriers and the guys work hard and try to find a hole and weasel in, and you put up new barriers and they try to weasel yeah. in and find those. You know, how, how does that work in the real world of what you guys do every day, how you plan your products, mm -hmm. how are you getting that information to kind of know where the next uh, potential fail point is? Yeah, so I think the first thing is, is that, you know, 10 years ago when we formed the company, we initially focused on the on-premises environment. Um, and, um, and then f five years ago, we built this multi-tenanted cloud service to address cloud and mobile, and so, most startups in this arms race of just focusing on cloud, they kind of ignore the, the on-premises. And mm. again, I think, especially in the larger organization, it's going to be a hybrid environment. So I think we, we naturally have an unfair advantage uh, in terms of that we can address the totality of an enterprise's IT infrastructure, no matter where it's located. Um, so it's leveraging your technology. But the other aspect is that we've been focusing very much on leveraging partnerships. We've been leveraging channel partners, and so right now, half our sales goes through channel partners, and that takes time to build up an effective channel partner. For sure. And then we've been also focusing on strategic partners. So at uh, Mobile World Congress just the other week, we announced this partnership with AVG. They're OEMing our identities and service offering and making that available to their customers. And we also have a great partnership with Samsung where they offer our identity technology as part of their platform towards the business as well. So can you unpack that a little bit yeah, more sure. of the Samsung? Because a lot of people obviously know Samsung, a lot of yeah. people have their phones. So what exactly does that mean? What, what is the benefit of that partnership to the person that's got the phone in their Absolutely. hand. Absolutely, so you know, Samsung is very much focused on the enterprise these days. They see that as a, especially with the problems that BlackBerry's been having, that they, they, they want to become one of the leaders vis-a-vis -vis providing a secure mobile platform for the enterprise. Okay. And so they invested heavily in this technology called Knox. It used to right. be called Safe, um, Samsung for Enterprises, um, but, but they also have now added some additional technologies like containerization technology to provide a separation be between work and play on the phone, right? But by itself, that's nice. They also realize they need an ecosystem of mobile management vendors, but they also understand that because the device is so closely tied to the user, and that the user is increasingly using that as an access point to access Salesforce, Concur, WebEx, et cetera, that they wanted to make sure that the device itself could be managed, and then from the device, that single sign-on could be facilitated with, basically, actually, we call it zero sign-on on a mobile device. You just want to click the, the icon and just seamlessly access to that, and also integrate biometrics. And that's biometrics. managed by the, by the corporate IT. They're managing exactly. that, so they exactly. just give you the device and, and, and so, load it. So we have an OEM relationship in which we provide the, the identity access management capabilities and some mobile management capabilities uh, for Samsung in, in their enterprise offerings. Okay. And that's part of that Knox. That's part of the Knox, suite. exactly. Okay, yeah. excellent. So let's do, let's do some, uh, some some words 101 here. So okay. we've thrown around some words. I <laughs> wanted right. to help educate the audience. So we've talked about privilege management, identity management, and mobility management. Okay. Let's, w w what are those exactly? Okay, uh, so let's, kind of so identity up. management is about uh, users, what they can access, controlling the access, uh, et cetera. So it, and you know, frankly, identity is not only about the technology, but it's also about the people, the process associated with it as well. So okay. it's about giving the right people access to the right information and providing the means for, for people to do that. Privilege management builds upon identity management and saying, look, there's a special class of users that have access to key corporate information. And so besides giving them the right people the right access, I want to provide additional levels of control. I want to control exactly what commands they can type, when they can type it, where they can type it. I also want to audit 
all their activity, not just like they logged in, but I want to capture every keystroke or every mouse click, uh, et cetera. So that's privilege management. And what are the apps and access where people apply that extra layer? Oh, well, it's, it's core infrastructure. It's your servers, it's your routers, um, et cetera. What we found is, is that within, because of the increasing complexity that's happening in IT, one manifestation, which is an identity management, is that users have too many passwords. The other side of the coin is, is that because of the complexity, IT people are sharing too many accounts. They're sharing the root account, the <laughs> Oracle account, right? You know, they're the gods, right, right, uh, right, right? Within the organization, they can do anything. And so look at the Sony Pictures hack. They targeted via phishing, these advanced persistent threats, they're going after the IT guys, the DBAs, right. that have the, the, the Oracle D, Sys DBA accounts, they're going after the sysadmins with the root accounts, they're going after the email administrators. So why hack just regular Joe Blow user? You just get access to that, that, that person's email, no big deal. But if you, if you hack the email administrator, or the file uh, administrator, or the network, the guy with the router, you have access to everything. And Probably the best manifestation of that is with uh, Snowden, right? He was a system administrator and uh, clearly accounts were being shared, right? And, and there's no accountability associated with that as well. Um, and then of course as more stuff moves to the cloud, then, then the administrators have uh, unbridled access to stuff on Amazon, Azure, Salesforce, et cetera. So those are the people with the keys to the kingdom where you really want to pay extra uh, special attention to them. Much like if you go into a casino, there's an eye in the sky, right? right. And the eye in the sky is spending just as much uh, attention on the dealers making sure that they're not doing stuff as opposed to the, the people actually at the card table as well. Yeah, it's interesting. I heard a story about where they targeted some company where, where somebody had set up like a, a charity website kind of on the side as a do good feel good thing but it yeah. was it was the same guy that had the keys to the kingdom so they came through the feel good you know goodness charity yeah. thing and that was their access point because they figured out it was the same guy yeah so they if they are able to get that guy's password right then they can get access to anything. And so if you look at what happened to Sony, Anthem, the whole list goes on. It's about privilege management. So there's an area of specialization. And then the final thing about mobile management, it's clearly mobile management has gone beyond basic mobile device management. We provide that. And the reason why we provide that is if, if mobile is becoming the access point, of course you want to make sure it's, a, it's not jailbroken, it's a secure, you can apply policies. But mobile management nowadays also includes mobile application management, the ability to deploy apps. And what we uniquely do is that we can provision a user in Salesforce, but then also deploy Salesforce app to the mobile device at the same time. It also provides containerization technology, uh, uh, which we, instead of trying to build that ourselves, are partnering with Samsung, we partner with Apple, because we kind of see that's being part of the co core OS. Okay. Uh, so that's what mobility management as well. And of course, I think there's increasingly, people realize that there is more of an identity component to mobile management because of the tie-in with the user and their device. Okay, so I want to ask you a question about cloud and security. Yes. Not yeah. specifically to your product, but more generally. Yeah. Um, which is more secure, a public cloud or your own cloud, and and the reason I ask is I think it's it's interesting when we hear mm -hmm. about all these hacks yeah. that are oftentimes accessed through an internal employee. Yeah. Where if you've got a public cloud, it's at Amazon or Azure or whatever. Yeah. In the theory, there's not as many uh, disgruntled employees at my shop that have access to that data. Mm -hmm. Are public clouds secure? Are they more secure? Is it just a different type of security? What do you think? I think in general that I think increasingly public clouds are going to be more secure just because there's that that that's their business. There's just one, you know, like there's one, only one, say Office 365 or Salesforce. They have a complete army of people making sure that it's completely secure, et cetera. They're getting third-party testing validation. I mean, for our p public cloud that provides this uh, identity as a service, I mean, we've got Safe Harbor, you know, SaaS, you know, got all the certification. We have a team of people right there, and I highly doubt that that the similar levels of certification are being done by large corporations for their private for their cloud as, as well. And, and frankly, um, yeah, I, so I, I think increasingly, just because the bar is so high, and, and you know, we haven't heard of a major hack of a, of, of a Salesforce or Office 365, et cetera, um, but we're, see, we're hearing more about the hacks of the, the, the Anthems, the Sony Pictures, et cetera, um, I think that uh, uh, better 
practices are being uh, utilized with a lot of the, the public cloud. Not to say that there probably wouldn't be a, a major breach that eventually occurs you know, with one of the big providers, et cetera, but uh, the bar is higher for those guys, and I, it's, it's hard for 2,000 global, uh, you know, global enterprises to have that same level of bar that a Salesforce puts in place with, with, with their cloud. Yeah, interesting. All right, so we're almost to the end of our time here. Yeah. I know RSA is coming up, your big show. So what, what's going on at RSA? What are you excited about? And then you know, kind of what's on the agenda now for the next 12 months? Yeah, you so, guys? so we're doing, so we're actually going to come out with a new product line um, uh, at RSA, and it, it provides additional levels of identity capabilities based on our cloud platform. So we've really built our cloud platform to actually be a platform where we can have, not only it provides single sign-on, provisioning, multi-factor authentication, but there's the ability for us to further extend it, and we're going to be coming out with a new suite of products uh, based on that. So it's going to be more cloud stuff, that we're cloud-based architecture and okay. delivery. So basically all our new stuff is going to be based on the cloud, um, and in addition, you know, further tying the mobile management capability. So we're going to have a big splash there, uh, and uh, we're really excited about, you know, what's happening at RSA. Awesome, you got to put all that money to work that you got last Absolutely. year. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, Tom. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'm Jeff Frick. We're having a CUBE conversation in Palo Alto, the heart of Silicon Valley. Thanks for watching. Join here with Tom Kemp, co-founder and CEO of Centrify. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching the CUBE. We'll see you next time.